So today we start, well, basically the last chapter, chapter 12 on the program for uh, this course, uh, which is parametric equations. However, well, we're going to start with 12.4 first, which is a review of the conic sections because, well, we need to review what those are, how, they are, how their equations look like, so we can have a better overview of, uh, of what the parametric equations are. Of course, this is not going to be like the most exhaustive review we're gonna do like only one or two examples of each uh, however if you would like to uh, review more in depth about this topic I have a I have a few videos on my YouTube channel that I will put as well on the on the models along with this video lecture so you can go back so well conic sections uh, what, what are they and where are they coming from well so number one so consider two cones where we have the the tips of the cones face the, of the two cones facing each other and you can think of this plane like a knife you know cutting uh, cutting like a cross sectional for for the um, <coughs> for, for in different angles number one well so if we cut the the, the cone on the plane exactly horizontally we would have uh, we would have a, a circle so the intersection between that cone and that plane it's going to be a circle but otherwise if we cut that uh, that cone with the same plane but we, but we have that plane slightly slanted the intersection let me use a different color here the intersection between the plane and the cone it's going to be not a circle it's going to be an ellipse what well typically we call this an oval but the fancy name is ellipse now the other conic section well it's the parabola and that is obtained when we cut um, the cone with the plane when uh, when the plane has the same uh, in the same angle as the edge of the cone and that gives rise to the parabola and the last one when we cut the cones exactly vertically and we obtain like two parabolas this look like two parabolas but recall this one is called the hyperbola right in this case well that's the center of the hyperbola and well different properties for well we're going to look at those different properties soon and well so there is a general second degree equation of a conic we have the quadratic terms ax squared cy squared dx ey f some constant but we have that extra term bxy in this case this b we consider that as a zero because otherwise well uh, when that value of the b is a, it's an it's another it's a number other than zero well then we have what we what we usually call uh, rotation of axis which is in this case some conics like the parabola or the ellipse that are not they are neither vertical nor horizontal they have an actual angle in this case so but well typically we look at this uh, some pre-calculus courses cover those uh, uh, those rotation of axis which is what you do is multiply the polynomial represented in, in, in matrix form do some matrix operations and do the rotation depending on the angle that we want to rotate that section so but that's something that is either sometimes covered in pre-calculus sometimes covered in linear algebra well depends so let's go ahead and look at what a parabola is well so here is a formal definition and well the parabola is the locus of all points p in the xy plane that are the same distance d from a fixed point f as they are from a fixed line called d well that point f is usually called the focus and that line is that line d is typically called it's actually called the directrix and well, the equations for the parabola, well, depending on whether they are, they open to the sides or up and down. So for vertical axis, well, that is, we have, a, we have the y variable raised to the first power and the x variable to the second power. And when we have the situation in which the horizontal opens to the sides, whether to the right or to the left, we have the y variable 
uh, in this case, the square variable and the, and, and the x variable is the variable to the first power. Well, so let's look at this definition with, a, with an animation here. Well, so, so again, the idea is that uh, if I drag this point right here, notice the distance between that fixed point called the focus and any point on the parabola is this is always the same as that distance between this line right here called the directrix and that same point so if i drag it okay, let me drag it it's always the same all right as long as that's the same the, those two distances are the same well the shape that you will obtain is the parabola and of course i mean you can you can play with the different properties you can make it wider make it make it a uh, narrower you can shift it, all right? And, in w and whether you shift it up, down, left, right, doesn't matter. Uh, this, whole, this will always hold true, all right? Let me, so I change it, I shifted it, and I also make it wider. So if I, drag, if I drag the point, those distances between that point on the parabola to both the focus and the directrix, it's always the same regardless of, of, the, of how wide or narrow or whether the parabola has a, uh, a vertex at, this, at the origin or somewhere else is shifted. So, and we'll actually, we'll send you the links for this, uh, for this applet so you can have, a, so you, if you, in case you want to play with them. All right, so well now, so when P is positive, uh, either the parabola opens up or to the right depending on which equation we have. But, but in the case where P is negative, the parabola opens down or to the left. So that's, what, that's one way to determine what kind of conic section and in which direction it's opening by just looking at the sign of the value of P. So let's look at one example. So for the first example, let's gr they're asking us to graph x equals to negative one half y squared plus four. And they're also asking us for the vertex, the focus, and the directrix, all right? So in this case, number one, we need to make sure that, it that the equation looks like the one on the forms for like on the form that we have on the previous page. So, notice, number one, when we have this in general form, we want the quadrat, the square terms, isolated on the left-hand side of the equation without any mo constant multiples and everything else, we move it to the right-hand side. In this case, our given equation here is not in that, in that format. So, what we're going to do first here, okay, so first of all, let me... I will uh, I will subtract 4 first. That's going to give me an, an x minus 4 on the right hand side. So I'm going to reverse the order at the same time and a negative 1 half y squared. And while we need to isolate the quadratic term, we need to multiply in this case both sides by negative 2. So that cancels the negative 2. That's the same as obtaining y squared equals negative 2, x minus 4. All right. Now, so in this case, well, whenever we have only y squared or y or x or x squared, it's important to put, well, my advice here is to add a zero as a placeholder. What am I talking about? Well, like I'm, I'm talking about this y squared. Uh, this is the same as saying y minus zero quantity squared equals to negative two x minus four. And this, so we can relate the equation to the form y minus k quantity squared equals to four p x minus eight. This way, from here, we can obtain the equation, the equation, the information to number one, list all the properties, and then so we can graph the equation. 
All right. So number one, let's have a let's write down a list of what we want to of, of what we want to find from the equation. So number one, the vertex. The vertex is always hk. No matter, regardless of whether this is an, a sideways parabola or a vertical parabola, the vertex is always hk. Well, so from here, uh, let's identify the value of h. Okay, so the value of h in this case will be, oh, I have the reverse again, hk. So this will be um, uh, h, which is 4, and k, which is 0, all right? And well, so from here we got the vertex. So now we need the focus. And well, we'll figure that out after we graph this. So number one, how about we do the graph first? So number one, oh, actually, let's find that value of p, and we will define what that value of p. So from the equation, this 4p is the same as negative 2. And that 4p, you will see. So 4 4p equals to negative 2. And solving for p in this case, that's going to give us a negative 2 over 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. This value of p is what we call the focal distance. That focal distance is the distance between the vertex and the focus, which also happens to be the same distance between the focus, but I mean, um, between the vertex and the directrix. Again, okay, let me, let's go back to the animation here. So, let me take it where the vertex, okay. See this distance right here? The distance from the point A, which is the vertex on the parabola, to that point F, which is the focus, is the same as that distance from that point to that line called the directrix. And we're going to use that this information in order to, to graph both the, the directrix and the orientation of the parabola. So number one, uh, let's see. Let's go back to the notes. So I'm going to draw a Cartesian plane. And well, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think we may need that many. All right, so number one, the vertex. The vertex, which is the point four comma zero. Well, that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the vertex. Let's start by drawing the vertex. Okay, well, the, the distance this distance p is negative one half, so that is negative one half unit away, actually, or one half unit to the left from the vertex. Maybe I should make this larger in scale. Otherwise, one, two, three, four, but yes, much better. So, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the focus, so that's one, two, three, four. And then, well, halfway through here is our focus, F, okay? And then the same distance away, we will have our directrix. And our directrix will be, a ver will be this vertical line right here. Now, in which direction are we going to draw the parabola? Up, down, left, or right? Left. To the left. Well, how do we know? Well, you can think of this focus, okay? Let me go back to the animation. You can think of this focus as a magnet, pulling all these points, giving the shape of the parabola for, for all the set of points. Well, so the parabola will then open in the, in the direction where the focus is away from, from the vertex in this case. Uh, where is it? 
it's going to look like this. It's going to be a sideways parabola. Now from here, well, what's this point? Uh, so that's, uh, this is the vertex, this is the focus, this is the directrix. Well, this directrix is, a, it's a vertical line, x equals to, okay, so if this is 4, 4 plus a half, is that a, uh, 7 halves? 7 halves? And, no, wait a minute, it's 4, it's 9 halves, right? 9 halves. And well, the focus is, I believe it's this point, it's where x equals 7, this is the 7 halves. So that means the focus, well, will be uh, 7 halves, 0, and the directrix will be the vertical line, x equals to 9 halves. And well, we also need that, um, that what, one more piece of information, the axis of symmetry. And in this case, well, the axis of symmetry is an imaginary dashed line that divides the parabola in exactly two equal parts. I'm going to use a different color for that one. Let me use this green. So, and well, in this case, it happens to be the horizontal axis, the x, the x axis, which happens to be y equals to zero, all right? And well, of course, there's a little bit more about that. I'm, I'm not going to go through all these details. It turns out that there's another uh, important vertical line well, or horizontal line depending on the orientation of the parabola. So this, there is this distance between or it's called, it's actually called a chord. A chord is the distance between two points in a circle or in a parabola or an ellipse depending. Well in this case in, on, in a parabola and it looks like this. And this distance right here is called the latus rectum. It's, it's a line that passes through the focus, it's parallel to the directrix, and the endpoints well are whatever those endpoints on the parabola would well. In this case, I'm not going to, we're not going to find this, uh, you know, we don't, we don't need to go all the way to these details. However, on the videos that I will share later with you from, my, from when I thought Math 101 in, during, the, during the pandemic, I will go over those details, you'll see. But, you're, but you, you wouldn't be asked to find all those points, okay? Uh, only the vertex, focus, directrix, I mean, just the basics. And well, that's one example on finding on finding all the information, vertex, directrix, axis of symmetry, all of that. All right. Yes, when it actually it's pretty interesting chapter how we use a lot of words in Latin here that really don't have any translation, like this one right here, locus. This one means set or set of all points. So that's another. It, it means locus like place, you know, like local. So, you know, every a set of points is a set of places, you know, so that's the idea. All right, write down the equation of the parabola with vertex zero comma zero and focus zero negative two. Okay, so this is my advice. Whenever you're given instead the information but not the equation, graph those two points. I think that's the, that's a better, a better strategy than trying to memorize, you know, because I mean, I'm going to share my videos and on my videos, my approach is to memorize the, it's memorized like the, or have an, or rather, or, well, one, one way could be memorized. The other way is to find a pattern recognition like, uh, oh, if you have this parabola, well, that P is plus the X value of the vertex and well. So I think it's like a lot of symbolic memorizations and well I don't think it's a it's the most efficient way to go through these kinds of problems so number one let's let's plot the vertex which is the origin all right 
So that's the vertex. Let me label it as a V for vertex. And the focus, which is the point zero negative two. Okay, so that's gonna be uh, two units down along the Y axis. All right, that's the focus. Okay. Now, from here we may go ahead and draw the graph of the parabola. So the question is, in which direction is this parabola going to go to? It's going to go down, right? Again, you can think of this focus as a magnet pulling all these points towards the, well, it's not a center, it's towards the focus. Okay? So it's going to look like this. Now, from the picture, what is the value of P? And be careful here. It's two, but in this case, it sits below the x-axis. It's a negative two, all right? Otherwise, it would have an, uh, an up, uh, a vertical parabola, or rather, a parabola opening up. Well, we would have the focus above the x-axis, and well, in this case, we will be moving two units above that x-axis, all right? And in this case, well, that's represented with a positive value. Well, so the same distance, from the from the vertex to the focus but on, on the other side of the focus what do we have what other element of the parabola do we have there the directrix and, and in this case it, this is a solid line as opposed to a to a dashed line which is represented by this green line right here right that divides the parabola into and well I'm not I'm trying not to draw it exactly on top of the axis so you can see the difference in colors, all right? And well, from here, uh, we're gonna, because in this case, this is a vertical parabola, we may just refer to the equation that has the, uh, um, the vertical parabola, x minus h, quantity squared, equals to 4p, y minus k. All right, where in this case, both H and K are zero. And P in this case is negative two. And Y minus zero, it's fine. Just write down those X minus zeros for full four placeholders for now. But of course, I mean, you know that whenever we have circles, ellipses or hyperbolas with centers at the origin, we don't need to write this, but I usually do just so you can see where are these coming from and so we can relate it to the equation in symbolic form with, in terms of H, K and P. Well, so this is X squared equals to negative eight y and of course typically we solve these equations for y well in conic sections typically this is a good final answer but if we were in like intermediate algebra or in basic algebra what we do usually is to solve for y no need in this case to do that this is good enough all right and i believe that's about it for, for the parabola. Only a couple of examples. Let's move on to the next topic, the ellipse. Now, what is the ellipse? The ellipse is the locus or the set of points in the plane for which the sum of those distances from two fixed points, in this case, it's, they are called foci. There's more than one focus this time, you know? Uh, these are called foci, not focuses. It's, it, it's pronounced foci. Well, that distance is constant. That distance is always the same when we add them all together. All right, so, and this is, well, there is an illustration right next to, to the text and the equation in which, well, in, that tells us how to construct an ellipse. Now, uh, of course, an animation is always better, all right? And well, I remember using a better applet for this. So this is what we're gonna do. So we have this one focus and this other focus right here. And well, notice in this case, these distances right here, when I add them 4.85 plus 5.15, we get a 10. So I'm gonna drag this point P. And well, that distances change, those distances change, 3.63, 6.37, and when we combine them together, what do we get? 
we still get sand. Let me drag it somewhere else. 2 .3, 7 .6, 2 .3, 9, 7.61, it's still 10. So if we keep doing this all along the point, whoops. Do you see the 10 all the time? It's always, it's constant. That sum of the two distances in green and purple is constant. It's always the same. Okay, let me see if I can make it, make this smaller. Okay, yeah, much better. There's another ellipse right here. And then in this case, that constant total distance between the focus in a point and the other focus and that point on the ellipse is also the same all the time. All right, so that's, uh, that, that's pretty much the definition of the ellipse. And well, uh, some, some important aspects to take in consideration right here. Well, that's the general form, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k uh, squared over b squared has to be equal to 1. So before analyzing an equation, we need to make sure that it is written in this form. Now, when it comes to the ellipse, the ellipse will open or will be stretched either vertically or horizontally depending on the values of a and b. Now, for example, in this case, if the value of a is the largest one, that means because it's in the denominator of the x variable, it's going to extend horizontally. But, all, but otherwise, if the value of b is larger than the value of a, because in this case, it's in the denominator of the y value, that means it's going to extend, it's going to be extended vertically, and we are going to have a vertical ellipse in this case. So let's look at an example. So we have this ellipse 36x squared plus 9y squared plus 72x minus 36y plus 36 equals to zero. Well, <clears throat> this is typically like the worst case scenario of a kind of exercise whenever we have something like, well, we, because in this case we're given the equation in polynomial form not in standard form, so we can see the focus and, and well, not the, the foci and the center and find the vertices, right? So we need to complete the square and actually we have to do that twice. Well, to complete the square, number one, we need to isolate the variable terms and the constant term, in this case, the 36, send it to the right hand side. And at the same time, there's something else that we need to do. Uh, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is group the x terms with the x terms and y terms with y terms, that is. Uh, in this case, 36 x squared plus 72x, and no, that's fine, plus 9y squared minus 36y equals to negative 36. Well, we cannot complete the square just yet because recall that in order to complete the square, we need to make sure that the leading terms, the square terms in this case, have a coefficient equal to one. So I'm gonna factor, uh, okay, first of all, let me group them to make this look a, a, li a little bit easier to visualize. So we have one group and a second group. The group of the x's and the group of the y's. All right, so, well, so let's factor out a 36. 36 times x squared plus, I believe this one is two, plus some number, all right, and then plus 9, y squared uh, minus 4y plus another number. And that blank number that I'm writing there, those are the two numbers, and the two numbers actually, that are going to complete the square and then turn this into perfect square trinomials, which eventually are going to give us that uh, standard form for our ellipse. However, be careful because notice Notice on the right, on the left hand side, we are adding a number, a blank number, but this blank number, it's being multiplied by 36. You guys follow me here? Okay, so, so if, if, we, if we add a number times 36 on the left, we need to do that on the right. And over here, I'm adding another blank, which is multiplied by nine, we need to do that same operation on the right hand side. 
customer, right? So in this case, what are those magic numbers that complete the square? Well, it's always the leading the, the middle coefficient, that is the coefficient of the variable to the first power, divided by two and then squared. So in this case, two over two is one, one squared is one. That's one, that's one. And the other one is negative four over two, quantity squared. So negative four over two, that's two, negative two actually. But that negative two being squared, isn't that a four? And so add that four again. All right. On the one hand, well, one thing to notice, first of all, this is gonna be a 36 times one, which is 36, which cancels with negative 36. And that's gonna leave us with nine times four on the right hand side, which is 36. On the right, on the left hand side, however, we're gonna be left with 36 times x plus 1 squared plus 9 y minus 2 squared and we're almost there we're almost there with getting the equation in the form that we want so okay let me scroll a little bit up to the definition box so well, we already got this x minus h squared and this y minus k squared. What else do we need? There's one little thing that we need to do. Divide both sides by 36 in a way that the right hand side of the equation is a 1 and that's going to, that's going to nail it here. So let's divide both sides by 36, 36, 36. All right. So that's going to leave us with x plus 1 squared plus 9 over 36, I believe that's a 4 in the denominator. And I would recommend to write this one, and that equals to 1. Okay? And that's the equation. Well, they're asking us to find the center, the foci, and the vertices. Well, uh, and of course, graph. Well, it doesn't say, oh yeah, it says graph. It says graph. Okay, so from the form, let's get the important stuff. Number one, from here, this is our a squared, which equals to one. That means a will be one. From here, b squared equals to four b equals to 2. All right? And from here, let's see. Okay, that means from the center, which is... Okay, let's list the center. Oh, yes. This part? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Center. The center will be... H, K, well, in this case, it's always the opposite sign of those numbers, so that's a negative 1, 2, okay? And these values of A and B are the number of units the ellipse open horizontally and vertically, respectively, away from the center. So I think we have all the information to draw the graph. And then from here, we are going to find the the coordinates of, uh, of the foci and then also the vertices so okay let's draw the graph and so one two three four five three four five all right so the center is negative one comma two so I'm gonna go negative 1 and 2. Okay, so this A and B, A is the number of units uh, along the x-axis. Notice I should have written a plus or minus, but I mean because it's, it's a symmetric shape. It's one unit to the right and another unit to the left. And then from the center, to it's going to be two units up and two units down. So I think we can draw the ellipse like this. Well, it doesn't really look like an ellipse. I'm not the best at drawing, but I mean, I think, I think it's, a, it's a good picture here. 
Now, be careful because what, which ones are the vertices? So, because what well, we have four, basically four endpoints, the two vertical endpoints and the two horizontal endpoints. However, the ones that are legitimately, the vertices are the ones that are the endpoints of the longest uh, axis, if you think, because you can think of this ellipse as having a, a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. All right, so the endpoints of the of the vertical axis, in this case, the largest axis, are the actual uh, the actual vertices. So vertices, well, in this case, this is still negative one comma one two three four, negative one four, and then negative one comma zero. What about these two? Okay, let me call this. Let me label this as vertex. These other two points, of course, they have a name. They are called co-vertices, but uh, that's just something that I'm just going to mention. I'm not going to even find going to find them on the homework. You won't be asked to to find the co-vertices. Typically, you're, you're asked for those in a pre-calculus course, in an algebra course, but in this case, well, we're just going with the basic properties here. Now, there's a couple of there's other points that we need to talk about in this case the foci that is uh, well actually again think of these points as magnets that pull the points to give that circular shape that uh, that elliptic shape in this case and well we need to find this distance called c that's it in, in the parabola the focal distance was labeled with the letter p but in the ellipse this distance is labeled with the letter c okay and that C right here, uh, it's, it's, on the, it's on the definition box. It's C squared equals the absolute value of the differences between A squared and B squared. So let's find, let's find that the difference. So C squared equals absolute value of A squared minus B squared. And well, C squared equals, okay, A squared is one and B squared is four. And the absolute value of 1 minus 4, that's the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. And then from here, C is plus or minus root of 3. And plus or minus because, okay, think of from the center, up and down, we're going to go plus up root of 3 units and minus down root of 3 units from the center. So I think we're ready to... The, to write down what the foci is in this case. So foci it's basically the center but in this case the coordinate that gets shifted is the y coordinate of the of the set of the fo of the center that is 2 plus or minus square root of 3. And well of course typically we write them down 1 plus and 1 minus, so that's a negative 1, neg uh, 2, 2 minus root of 3, and 2, comma, wait, negative 1, 2 plus root of 3. So those are the coordinates of, and while the vertices, we already wrote them down, let me rewrite them, they are 2 for the ellipse. That's negative one four, negative one zero. And well, that's pretty much the uh, the the basic properties for the ellipse. Of course, just like the parabola, in this case we are gonna have two lati rectum, one here and another there. But again, we're not gonna go through all these details. Just the folks, the foci the vertices and the center that's all we need for for the ellipse uh, nothing more ultimately we are going to rewrite this equation the idea is to just identify them so we can rewrite their corresponding versions in parametric form all right so let's do the next topic uh, which is the hyperbola so for the hyperbola which is a very similar definition 
the locus of all points in the plane, uh, but as opposed to the ellipse, in this case, it is the difference between those distances that draw the hyperbola, not the sun, which gives rise to the ellipse. And of course, an animation would be better. So let's see. Notice we have this, this hyperbola right here. And in this case, I'm choosing any point on the hyperbola. Now, we are, from this point on the hyperbola, we are going to find the distance from that point to the first focus and the distance from that point to the second focus. If we subtract those distances, it will always be the same value. So let me drag, okay, here what, we, what do we have? PF1 minus PF2, it's 4.02. I'm going to drag it somewhere else. PF1 and PF2 change, but did the difference change? No, and, and whenever this happens, the resulting shape on the set of points will be will be the hyperbola and of course we can do it on one of the of the branches of the of the hyperbola or the other branch it should always work the same all right but that's how we define this set of points hyperbola and ellipse in terms of distances between two fixed points and any point on the graph of that conic section that we want to describe okay and well, of course, here we have a couple of, of forms as opposed to the ellipse. I didn't write both of them. I just wrote the, the first one and then we discussed how do they open vertical horizontally whenever A or B is the largest of them. In this case, uh, notice both variables are squared X and Y just like the ellipse. And in this case, we have this order A and B. It's always A and B. They never change to B or A. What changes is the variable that is negative or positive. So, and in this case, well, we're going to have hyperbolas having the two branches opening to the sides or opening up and down. How are we going to know which one is it? Well, it, it depends on which variable has the positive sign in this case. If the x variable in this case, it's the positive term, well, the transverse axis, which is the axis that passes through the foci, the center, and the vertices. All right, if in this case it's horizontal, well, that's going to be along the x-axis. But otherwise, if the y variable is the positive one, that means the branches will open up and down. All right. So let's go ahead and do one example. So they're asking us to sketch the graph of something simple, x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4, something that it's centered at the origin and with, is, with really nice and easy numbers, 16 and 4, nothing weird, nothing crazy. Uh, number one, by just looking at this equation, will we have the branches of the hyperbola opening up and down or right and left? How do we know that? Because the x is, is, is first in the middle. It's, it, it's, the, it, it's the positive term, right? The x variable has the positive term. That's how we know. Yeah, be, be, careful, be, be careful with that because we could have written the equation like this, having the y first, all right? But still, what we're, what we're looking at is the variable that contains the, the positive sign in this case, okay? So let's go ahead and write this down. Well, let me write, rewrite the equation to get all the information. x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 equals to 1. So in this case, we can get that a squared equals 16, which is a equals plus minus 4, and b squared equals to 4 b plus or minus 2. Okay, so I think the center here is pretty straightforward. And the reason is that the, neither the x nor the y are shifted at all. So, 0, 0. And then, well, the vertices, well, we'll have to figure that out. I don't think it's going to be, okay, yeah. Mm. 
Okay, the vertices are going to go along the horizontal distance, in this case the number of A units away from the center. That is, okay, center, I'm not, not center, uh, vertices. Uh, okay, let me write them down. So number one, let me do the graph instead. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, so the center is the origin, zero, zero. And because we know for sure that the branches of the hyperbola are horizontal, well, that means we're going to have the vertex, one of the vertices, uh, some units away from the, uh, some units to the right, and some units to the left of the center. How many units? Well, in this case, A units, plus and minus, in this case, four. And those are the vertices. Now, yes? If the function is um, vertical instead, would you use B or would you still use A? We will still, we will still use A, but in this case, uh, we would be shifting up, going up and down. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Because in this case, A, A and B can be, it doesn't matter which one is larger. As it, in this case, it matters which one is the positive one. Mm -hmm. So from here, okay, what do we do? Okay, now let's go back to the picture. Notice the position of the foci. In this case, the foci, again, think of like magnets, think of them like magnets pulling the points, you know, like gravity. In fact, I mean, you can always relate to like the orbits of the planets in, in, a, in, a, in a given uh, solar system, you know, how our planet goes around, uh, well, typically we think it's a circular pattern, but it's really not circular, it's actually a... Uh, it's actually elliptic, you know, we think of it as circular because the center is the sun. We, we don't have like two foci as a reference, right? But I mean, so you can think of the foci like this. So the foci should be somewhere here and somewhere there. And of course, this is going to represent the fact that we, that the, that the conic section in this case opens to the right by looking at the equation. All right, like this. And like that. All right. And then from here, there's another thing that we do. We do like a mini box. So that mini box will be okay. That's a four unit, four unit, and B plus and minus two unit. This minus. Well, actually, I'm going to erase the branches. You'll see why. Because, I mean, look at the branches. These branches are not very accurate. We need this box in order to, to get the branches more accurate. And in this case, we use this box right here to draw uh, a couple of diagonal lines. These diagonal lines actually happen to be dashed lines. And go from corner to corner, passing through the origin. are actually the asymptotes of the hyperbola. Oh, come on. Nope. Like this. And this will will be this will serve as a support to draw the hyperbola more accurately. right it's actually kind of smashed vertically and stretched horizontally all right okay so what's next uh, what's next in this case it's uh, find that value of C right here which is the focal distance and that focal distance as opposed to to the to the to the ellipse. In this case, for the ellipse, we have the absolute value of the difference between a, a squared and b squared. But for the hyperbola, it's the sum of them. So we need. Let's go ahead and find that value. Uh, so c squared equals uh, a squared plus b squared. 
where, okay, c squared, that's a 16 plus 4, c squared equals to 20, c equals plus or minus the square root of 20, and in this case, simplifying the radical, this is the same as saying plus or minus the square root of 4 times 5, plus or minus 2 root of 5. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let's write down the vertices first. So we were writing those before, graphing it. So I, I think here, like from here from the picture, we can find we can find out what the vertices are. Number one, negative four comma zero and four comma zero. Foci. For the foci, uh, that's uh, the center plus and minus this value of c. That is from the center, which is zero zero. That's going to be, in this case, for the false side. Oh, no, actually, it's not from the center. It's from the vertices. It's not shifted from the... It's for shifted from the vertices. It's 4 plus and minus to root of 5, comma, 0. And in this case, well, let's split both coordinates because when you uh, when you submit this answer on my MATLAB, there is no plus or minus symbol, so it's important to keep in mind to split them on both the positive and the negative one, 4 minus 2 root of 5, comma 0, and 4 plus 2 root of 5, comma 0. So what do we have? The center, the vertices, the foci, and the equations of the asymptotes. We need to find the equations of those asymptotes. I mean, so number one, when you watch the videos that I did for my Math 101 class I saw during the pandemic, um, um, just be aware that, in, that my approach on those videos is to memorize the equations depending on which situation is, whether this is a horizontal hyperbola or a vertical hyperbola. Uh, well, here I'm going to take just a different approach. I mean, think of these diagonal lines of these asymptotes. Aren't they just... Straight lines? Aren't those just linear functions, really? What do we need to find the equation of the line? There's two elements, again. Number one... Yeah. The, a point and the slope. And I think, I mean, the point is really easy, is the origin, which is great in this case. And how do we find the slope? Just see the rise over run. Okay, we have the diagonal line with positive slope, the one that is going up the hill. Well, it, it's rising two units, running four units. All right. So, uh, asymptotes. Okay, let me write them down here. For the asymptotes, uh, number one, the, the one that is going up in this direction. And so that that includes the point zero comma zero and a slope of rise over run that's two units up, four units down, which reduces to one half. And all we need is the point slope. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. That is Y minus zero equals one half X minus zero, which is the same as simply Y equals one half X. And number two, the one that has this orientation, all right, this orientation, right, and be careful here because in this case, the horizontal, okay, let me, yeah, sorry about that, yeah, in this case, um, the, the, whole, the diagonal asymptote right here, or the slant asymptote, it's not going up, it's going down, it's going two units down, dive two units, and run for units, it's not rise, it's a diving, and that diving in this case, well, still the same point, the origin, zero comma zero, and the slope, that's in this case, negative two units down, four to the right, which reduces to negative one half. And same, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, y minus zero equals negative one half x minus zero, which is the same, so y equals negative one half x. All right. Yes. Uh, 
Um, at the top, it says the foci are seen units from the center. Uh, it's a typo. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a typo. It's from it's from the vertex. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I think this uh, this is a sum. This is a good summary for the conic sections. Let's just briefly uh, identify uh, what some some equations in this case what they are. So. I mean, in this case, by just looking at the equation, try to identify which conic section they are. Okay, so, of course, number one, the, the number one thing you want to observe is look for the squared variable. Well, in this case, it could be possible that only one of the variables is squared, or maybe both of them. In this case, for letter A, we happen to have both of them to be, uh, to be squared. But the thing here is that one of the variable of the square variables is on the left, the other one is on the right. So let's uh, let's work a little bit on this equation. I'm going to write it: three y minus four squared minus x plus two squared equals to negative six. And then when we have both variable squares, we want to make sure that um, you know that. That this variable, that the equations are equal to one. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative six. Um, so divide by negative six, and negative six, negative six. So I'm going to write the positive first. So that's x squared, x plus two quantity squared over six minus three over six, which is one half. That's y minus four squared over two equals to one. Okay, observing this equation, what is it? Circle, ellipse, hyperbola, parabola, hyperbola, all right? Hyperbola. And well, they're not asking us which side it's opening to. You see the horizontal or vertical, just to check for concepts. Vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. How do we know it's horizontal? Mm, x is the positive one, right? And x is the horizontal axis. Let's look at the next one. So just real quick and then we take a break. Okay, so well, here we have all the variables all over the place. And we have a combination of x's and y's. You know, well, so that's going to be 4x squared, uh, in this case plus 4y squared minus y equals to 9. Well, in this case, I really don't want to spend too much time completing the square and writing the equation in, in the standard form. But however, in this case, uh, well, you know what? I think we should. <coughs> yeah. 4x squared, yes, because it's not going to be that evident. Because in this case, we have two cases when both when both variables are squared and both are positive. It could be an ellipse, or it could be the special case of ellipse, which is the circle when both denominators a and b are the same. So let's see. Uh, that's going to be a little bit funky. 4 times y squared minus 1 fourth y. Ooh equals to 9. Okay, so that 1 4 divided by 2 is going to be 1 8 and that 1 8 squared will be 1 over 64. 1 over 64. So that's going to be 4. Oh, I think this is enough. Because, I mean, look at the coefficients of x and y. If their coefficients or denominators doesn't matter, they're both the same. Is this a circle or an ellipse then? So when when the coefficients or denominators are different, that means one of the one of the sides, one or either the horizontal or the vertical is larger than the other one. But in this case. They're the same. That means whatever orientation you go from the center to any point, that's basically circle, All right? Basically circle. And well, let's write this as uh, uh, never mind. 
The next one, 4x squared minus y squared. Okay, what do we have? Both terms squared, but in one of them is negative. This means? Hyperbola. And last but not least, for letter D, oh, only one of the variables is squared. It doesn't matter which letter is, which variable is squared. It doesn't matter what sign it is. Ultimately, we just want to know what it is. Which one is it then? Parabola. And I think this is a good place to...